ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much to be there, and we are proud once again to have the, the, this connection that we love so much with uh, 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 Factory Awards. That is uh, very important. Uh, uh, when we realize they have a wonderful jury, a wonderful system to promote and to give opportunity to someone that should be a very expert perfumer or a new entry. But most of, the most important thing is to have the attention on the perfume. At the end of the story, we are selling, we are trying to sell juice and senses uh, and poetry, olfactory, olfactory poetry. And so I think when we realized that someone could do that better than us, immediately we was very happy to get married and we are very grateful to Saskia for the work she made all over the world and on behalf of our art of perfumery. So thank you so much. Thank you, Silvio. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name's Saskia. Uh, I live in Los Angeles, and I run the, I founded the Art and Olfaction Awards. We founded the awards in April of 2014 on a suggestion from a perfumer, Bruno Fazolari, based in California, who wanted uh, to see an award that was devoted to independent and artisan perfume. Initially, I rejected the idea, um, but after thinking about it, I felt that maybe there was a space for a, I have, I have cliff notes, a place to uh, empower the perfume community through a transparent award mechanism. We modeled it on the film festival system, which is uh, blind, and I won't go into that, but blind and, uh, and run by the jury. And similarly, the awards are basically a function of the people you see here and a few others who aren't here. We're a community-empowered thing. We're here to empower community, not to throw too many buzzwords around. Um, and I'm very pleased you could be here for our announcement. Our second year collaborating with Essence, thank you. Uh, and our third year at the awards. The awards are a program of the Institute for Art and Olfaction, which is a nonprofit organization based in Los Angeles. Our primary interest is to in uh, incorporate perfumery into the arts through partnerships with uh, museums and other institutions and through collaborations with artists. The awards are one program. Another program is very basic entry-level education to help artists understand the <laughs> medium of scent and then, of course, uh, our arts programming. And we collaborate with Hammer Museum and various other, other places in that capacity. This year, the awards will be held at the Hammer Museum, the first time uh, a large awards of this nature and, uh, and programming around it is held at a contemporary art institution. To us, that's very important because it takes perfumery out of the commerce space and into the art space, which is, of course, what we are all at the end of the day as artists and creatives, at least we hope to be. And with that, I'm going to get out of here and hand it over to Luca Turin, who's going to speak about whatever he wants. Um, hello, everybody. It's, uh, uh, I hope you guys will agree with me that this is the only truly believable perfume competition in the world. And this is because when we get the little bottles, we have no idea who did what. They're just blind. Now, I'm a scientist. I believe in blind and double-blind experiments. Um, let me tell you a little story. When I was first judging these, it was uh, last year, two years ago, uh, I, I was living in Germany and the customs, the local customs uh, administration kept the samples and asked me to come and collect them. So um, they say to me, what do you do? And I say, I work in the Institute of Theoretical Physics, the University of Ulm. And they say, and what are these? And I say, perfume samples. And they say, perfume samples. You work on the theoretical physics of perfume samples. So at which point, all I could say was yes. Um, and they were very impressed. And so then I go to my car, and I couldn't wait, and I was smelling all the perfumes in the car. And the man from the customs came out and saw me in the car smelling all the perfumes and looked at me in horror, okay? So I, I had a real revelation when this happened because I've been reviewing perfumes for various magazines over the years and mostly from big firms. And the big firms occasionally do great work but with a very strong emphasis on occasionally, okay? They mostly do very technically competent work, but it's not particularly interesting artistically. Now, as you can see from this exhibition and everything and from this competition, the world has changed. And if I may quote uh, the words of my hero, Michael Edwards, the gates of perfume heaven have opened, okay? This happened in the last five years, and he says, may they stay open for a long time. And we don't know how long they will stay open. So I, uh, I'm really honored and I'm really grateful to be in a position to be among the first to smell these things. 
They're not all good, thank God, otherwise we would go crazy as judges, but some that are really good are amazingly good. And it's been a joy and an honor to be one of the judges in this competition. Thank you for your submissions. So I'm Mark Banke of Colonister.com, and I was one of the finalist judges for this year's competition, and I'm going to give you sort of an overview of the judging process that went here. And I think one of the things that is the most important aspect of this competition, in my estimation, is the transparency of the judging. Previous competitions of this kind were very much a black box. You paid your entry fee, you put your perfumes in, a few months later something came out, but you had no idea who judged it, you had no idea what criteria was used, you had no idea what it was. This competition is the absolute antithesis of that. Every bit of criteria, every single perfumer who submitted understood the process that was going to go through. The first one is everything, as Luca said, in small, clear vials with just a number on them and a sheet of paper, a white sheet of paper with black and white print with whatever they want to say and what they were trying to achieve with their perfume. A preliminary round of everything was judged by a group of 16? 16 judges. And it was done in the open at the Institute of Art and Olfaction. Some were sent to some judges that didn't live in the, close enough to the LA area to come in and do this. If you go to the Institute in our, our, in our Faction Facebook page, you will see pictures of people doing the judging. It is, there is no black box here. It is as open as you can possibly see. You, are, you will see that these were people. They were there. There's a table. It was full of samples. Every, oh, behind my head, there was a table, just like that. <laughs> so it was, it was just like that. And they came along, and they did this. Once they each got to a final 10, they were submitted to the finalist judges, which uh, you'll, everybody up here is a finalist judge of one kind or another, and we assessed them. For me personally, I found this to be one of the most revelatory experiences for me. When I write, I write and I try to communicate what a perfume makes me feel, and I like talking about how it's constructed and how it's put together. But in this case, I had to pull back from that, and I had to really become the scientist. And so I took a lot of the emotion in the beginning and judged was it constructed well? Did it meet what they said they were trying to do? And those are things where it wasn't until the one aspect, the last aspect where my emotion could come into it. So there are four categories you're judged on. First impression, dry down, intentionality, how much did you do this? And the last one was X factor. And that's where we all got the chance to basically put in our person to say like, that's it. So the, original, so the first three categories are purely, does it meet a basic criteria. The fourth one is a chance for us to get beyond this. So in each category, independent, artisan, and experimental, there was a lead judge. Each person took a charge of this. And so that's the way the judging went. So now I'm going to hand it over to Antonio, and he'll tell you about it. Yeah. Uh, shall I do it in English or in Italian? English or Italian? Both. Both? Well, <coughs> I, uh, OK. Non mi chiedono di farlo sia in italiano che in inglese. Faccio metà e metà, non lo so, andiamo a braccio. Eh, uh, il processo era impeccabile. You don't see the name of a category? Right. Il processo è la prima volta che vengo coinvolto in questa giuria e ricevere da Los Angeles 86 fialette da 3, mm, da 3 millilitri l'una è avere davanti la prospettiva di un paio di settimane di serate chiusi in casa essenzialmente ed è una cosa che per quanto viene raccomandato da tutti di non condividere questa esperienza con altri, è inevitabile farlo con la persona con la quale vivi e magari una bimbetta di 5 anni che scorrazza per casa, quindi in realtà era un micro team il nostro il, del quale mi assumo le responsabilità. Le, adesso, per le cose serie passo all'inglese. <laughs> what, what I found it was the real problem it was kind of to remove out of a context uh, the subject uh, as a perfume and, uh, and generally kind of questioning myself about how do we acquire knowledge, how do we know things. 
stressing the factor that it's not as important to kind of have more knowledge, but the way, you know, that, that how, you know, and the way that all these give a form to something else. So the information process, how do we get informed? And uh, I mean, and that's why I swapped to English, because in Italian we don't have that mini difference between a shape and form. And I think that the main issue in judging something without knowing anything, without even looking at a bottle, a graphic, uh, or knowing who's behind it, even worse, uh, it's really kind of understanding the shape slash form of a project, the form of an idea, the ultimate expression of idea as information. And, uh, and, and it's challenging, I mean, in my personal life, I, I am a perfumer myself, and I know how challenging is that, and how difficult it's to achieve a result, especially because sometimes we don't really work on briefs, even if we do have briefs, you know, but the brief is something as an excuse to explore uh, a theme, something that interests you, some, a material that is challenging you, etc., etc. So when you're stepping on the judging side, it's extremely difficult to remove all the rest and just focus on the juice. The juice that it's objective. I mean, there's no subjectivity in perfumery, in my opinion. It's not a, I like it because I'm on my skin, on your skin, blah, 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 blah. It's either good, actually it's not even good, it's either a masterpiece or you don't want to sniff it again ever in your life. And that's because uh, it's uh, a matter of fact. It's not uh, as, as the purest form of art, as the purest form of science, uh, it's a matter of fact. It's not uh, a personal opinion. So when you judge a perfume, you don't express a personal opinion somehow. And uh, it was impossible for me, being an architect, and then I'll cut it down and I'll say we're the finalists, to don't think between yesterday and today about the loss of Zadid. You know, a great architect uh, that uh, fighted all her life uh, for form, for an idea of shape, for a, almost an uh, ideology of shape. And uh, uh, the criticism in architecture kind of uh, waked up with her after years of kind of very technical, academic, uh, boring subjects, because uh, she was outrageously uh, in the face of the public. So, a broader public had to deal with idea of architecture. I have a feeling that it's uh, as difficult as giving shape to ideas in architecture, in art, in literature, as, uh, etc., as in perfumery. It's a matter of medium. And, uh, and that difficulty is uh, something that we cannot understand. So it's something that we cannot judge. It's so, uh, it, it would have been a so, pretentious to think that I can judge the work of someone else, uh, but it's something that may be stepping into that gate that was mentioned before, you know, and I don't know what's after that gate. So at one point I just stop and I trust what I smell, you know, and that's again an objective trust because all the bases, all the hints will help me understanding a possible idea of that, or a possible matter of fact of that. Um, so, who are the 10 finalists? <laughs> okay, yeah, um, one, la one last thing about uh, objective expression in perfumery. It, the result, uh, well, what, it's what we call the juice, that it's not a term I love madly, because the juice is something you buy at a kiosk, uh, you know, when you're feeling warm. Um, that, that liquid, uh, smelly idea, it's an objective expression because uh, it has to follow rules in order to get a result, and the process uh, is the result, in my opinion. So, se uh, potete, if you can stand up when I announce the finalist, and, you know... Only the finalist. On, only the finalists, okay, yeah, yeah. stand up. Okay, uh, so in the artisan category, we have uh, Albino, a study in white from DSH Perfumes, Bird of, shall we 
clap our hands. Bird of Paradise from Fawn and Bloom Perfume. Cape Cod Wild Beach Rose from Nomatera. Incendo from La Curie. Love for Three Oranges from Ether Art Perfumes. Miyako from Aufari. Musk Rosa Tar from Rising Phoenix Perfumery. <laughs> Namibia from Fraser Perfume. <laughs> Peach Tree Garden from Phoenix Botanicals. <laughs> and Salome from uh, Papillon Perfumery. Thank you. Grazie. Hi everyone, it's so great to be here with you all in this amazing city and it's especially a big pleasure to announce this year's finalist in the independent perfume category. Thank you to the Institute for Art and Olfaction for creating a space and a platform where the expression of art, perfumery and the art of perfumery can be explored and acknowledged from a new perspective. It's been exciting to watch the evolution of the Institute in Los Angeles over the past few years. I've seen firsthand the influence, the positive influence it's had on the West Coast perfumery movement. And it's incredible to be here today and experience how we are all globally connected in this niche and independent fragrance renaissance. For the independent category, the submissions were qualified based on the following criteria. Um, number one, the company employs perfumers or collaborates with fragrance houses to develop the scent. The company is the ultimate decision maker for all fragrance decisions, brand and marketing decisions. The company is privately owned. And last but not least, the company worked with a fragrance house at some stage in the development um, in the development process, regardless of whether or not the final formula was created by the creator of the brand or the in-house perfumer. What I find impressive about this category is the level of collaboration between the fragrance house and the independent perfumers from the inception of the product all the way through to the, from the inception of the concept all the way through to the finished product. As a perfumer for over 20 years in the industry, as well as being an independent perfumer, I can tell you that it takes a lot of dedication, commitment, trust, and wait, communication, trust, commitment, and dedication for this type of collaboration to result in something truly special. This year's submissions were noteworthy for many reasons, for their style, for their composition, but also for the fragrances that each story revealed and the stories they revealed through the fragrances. Each perfumer who submitted in this category deserves to be acknowledged for their, acknowledged and congratulated for their dedication, for their work, for their vision, and for their success in conveying their stories through scent. And most importantly, for sharing these stories with us. And now for the finalists, I'd like to go ahead and announce the 10 finalists for the category. So if you hear your name, please stand up. Okay, we'll start with Panorama by Olfactive Studio. <laughs> Wahiki Dreams by Juliana Parfums Company. Fougère Nobile by Nobile, 1942. Salim Attar by Tabacora Perfumes. Nina Ali 
Nea by Jules Aimard, Paris. Past Presence by Rhodes. It's Ireland, right? Dublin. Dark Ride by Zarina. Elephant and Roses by Maria Candida Gentil. Rose de Taif Extray by Paris Monte Carlo. And last but not least, Bat by Zoologist Perfumes. All right, thank you. And last but not least, the experimental category. Uh, my name is Ashraf Asman. I'm from the Sand Culture Institute. And uh, again, I'd like to thank Zaskia and the Institute for Art and Olfaction for inviting me to be part of this really special process and award. Um, the Sadakishi Award for Experimental Work with Sand is a bit different than the two previous categories. Um, it originates as, as a background from the visual arts, really. So in a way, it traces its roots back to more Marcel Duchamp than Jean-Paul Gorlin. Um, and so the criteria for judging were slightly different. Where um, blindness was an essential criterion for the previous two, for this one, we had to have visuals, so photographs, sometimes audio uh, in terms of digital sound recording, sometimes video. Um, in one case, there were even performance instructions, so it was like a script. And it was such a thrill to have such a variety um, of media expressed that integrated sound. And, um, I will have to disagree with my fellow architect, Antonio, uh, about the subjectivity. I do think there is great subjectivity in the, the awards process and any arts process. Um, that does not make the judging any less valid. Um, I was not the only judge, obviously, for the experimental category. I can tell you that finalists would have been different if I were. But that is part of what is wonderful about these awards, is that it is not up to one person. There were several judges with different opinions. And um, in the end, we were all kind of rooting for our favorites. And so um, even though all the ones that were part of the finalists were worthy contenders, there were a lot also that did not make it to the finalists that I thought were very worthy contenders, that I was rooting for, and that are definitely works worth seeing. Um, we hope that work in this category continues um, to grow and that we will see more and more work um, around the world. Uh, so now let's go on to the finalists. Here we have five finalists, and uh, by alphabetical order, Century's Breath by Cat Jones. <laughs> Dear Enemy by Christy Gast. <laughs> the Truth of War by Maki Ueda. <laughs> Signal by Carrie Patterson. and Western Drive by Kellen Walker. Um, just a reminder that the finalists from the other categories, you will be able to uh, sample at the stand for the Art and Olfaction Awards near the entrance. Unfortunately, though, these works, since they're not just based on scent, you will not be able to sample. We would need several auditoriums for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Luca, Mark, Antonio, Sherry, and Ashraf. Uh, Luca's been a judge for three years. Without his participation, I don't think the awards would have happened, frankly, if we're honest, because a young chick from LA with an idea is one thing, but a young chick from LA backed up by 
illustrious Luca Turin is another. So I want to especially thank Luca for seeing the vision and believing it. Um, it's true. It's completely unreasonable. Um, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, Saskia has been doing an amazing job of running this thing. She writes the best business emails I've ever read in my life. And I'm, I'm taking private lessons on this. Um, and really, uh, it was a thing whose time had come, and she's made it happen professionally, fairly, and with a steady, continuous vision that's on track so far. So I thank you. All right. Likewise, Mark Benke has been, I'm not going to let you all respond, I'm sorry, because my ego is, you know. Uh, Mark Benke has, uh, has been a, a steady supporter. He's been very honest with me. He's, um, he caught a couple things that without his uh, help would have gone through. Um, so I want to thank Mark very much for his <laughs> steady vision and brutal honesty. Uh, Antonio is, you know, the spirit of the awards at this point, I think. He's the... <laughs> he's the <laughs> the platonic hero that guides our philosophy towards objectivity. Sherry has been a judge for three years from the beginning as well, and as a preliminary judge, she initially smelled everything. So she spent hours and hours and days and days in the institute going through the smells. Now, thankfully, she's only experiment um, independent, so it's a bit easier for her. But thank you, Sherry and Ashraf. <laughs> who together with Klaus have guided the experimental sort of vision of the awards and has kept us on, and have also uh, analyzed the data and kept us honest as well, if we're frank. Um, so a little housekeeping, what's next? We're gonna announce the winners at our uh, awards ceremony in Los Angeles. It's free to attend, it's open to the public. It's part of the Hammer Museum's public programming now. So the museum has taken it on as a program, which means that we have a lot of resources at our disposal to do a very big event this year. Uh, as a public event, it means anybody can come off the street. Hopefully they won't wear jeans, but if they do, that's okay, because our mission is to bring this to the wider public and to make parallels between perfumery and art as a whole. Um, okay. I want to quickly call out the last past winners. Uh, in 2014, our first year, Ashoka by Nila Vermeer Creations, she's here. The perfume was by uh, Bertrand Duchaufour, who's also here. Uh, Konig by Yosh, uh, the perfume was uh, made by Olivia John. Calling All Angels by April Aromatics, Tanya Boknig is here with her booth, definitely go say hi. And John Frum by Ether Arts Perfume, perfumer Amber Jobin, based in Colorado. In 2015, the winners were Black Pepper and Sandalwood uh, by Akakapa, perfumer Luca Maffei, who's right here. Skive by Canoe, perfumer Jess Jessica Hanna who's not here. Uh, Eau de Céleri by Mon Sillage, a brand out of Canada, the perfumer's name Isabelle Michaud. And then finally, Woodcut by Olympic Orchids by Ellen Covey, based in Seattle. Uh, the experimental category first year winner was Famous Deaths by a group of uh, Dutch artists, uh, Marcel van Brockel, Frederick Durerink, uh, I don't speak that, I don't know how to say that. Mark Moerenbird and Wander Eichelboom, I'm sorry for my Dutch. <laughs> Finally, I'd just like to quickly thank our partners. I won't go through them all, but Silvio and Valentina at Essence have been great supporters. Um, the Scent Culture Institute, of course. Past partners, of course, have included uh, Safleur Bon. Um, we've been very grateful to our blogger partners and our, our, our support from our community. So we couldn't do this without them. Um, did I miss anybody who's here? No, okay. And I think we're gonna open it up to questions. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free. We have about five minutes to answer a couple questions and then we're gonna go relax. No questions, fantastic. Well, thank you.